Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we will have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And also be sure to check out our Facebook group, Daily Bible Podcast. Just look for it under groups. And if you haven't already, we encourage you to hit the subscribe button. By subscribing, you'll make sure that you never miss an episode. And you'll be with us every step of the way, exploring Mm -hmm. truths and insights that the Bible has to offer. So hit subscribe. And thank you for your dedication, for joining us on this journey, for your exploration, and for your willingness to get into God's Word Michelle and I are so grateful for you, and we mm-hmm. love delving into the Bible together. So it's it truly is. a yeah. highlight of this year has been just doing this in community. Doing things in community is so important, and studying God's Word in community mm-hmm. is amazing. So today we are um, we read Jeremiah two twenty three through thirty seven, Jeremiah three. Jeremiah 4, and Jeremiah 5, the first 19 verses. Okay, Jeremiah. So we left Isaiah, we're in Jeremiah, and really he has so many metaphors to illustrate the the spiritual condition of Judah. Mm -hmm. So he compares the nation's actions to a young female camel in heat, (laughs) running wildly and uncontrollably in her pursuit of a mate. I mean, if that isn't a word picture right there. I would love to see a young camel in heat just to sort of put a picture as to who who uh, Israel was during this time. That's hilarious. I love yeah. that. The, and yeah, so it's, it's depicting that unbridled pursuit of idolatry and unfaithfulness mm-hmm. to God. And I think so many times when you put something in a word picture, you're like, oh, OK, this like this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. And. You know, God is loving and caring for his people, but still they turn away from him and they go after false gods. And it talks about leaving the true source of living water. So they're, again, pursuing all the wrong things when they have this true living water Mm -hmm. there for them. And so in Jeremiah 3, the prophet continues his warning and calls Judah to repentance. And God likens Judah's unfaithfulness to an adulterous wife who has betrayed her husband. So again, the same type of you know, pursuit of the wrong things. And despite her transgressions, God offers forgiveness and calls his people to return to him. And this passage also emphasizes God's longing for reconciliation and restoration with his people. If they would only turn away, and it's over and over, like just turn away from your sinful ways. I'm here for you. And so basically the prophet pleads for the nation to return to their covenant relationship with God, leaving behind idolatry and embracing his love and forgiveness. And so the same messages we've heard heard in some of the other prophets, again, is what Jeremiah is telling them. And, you know, here in Jeremiah, we're seeing God, like you just said, it's the same message over and over again, because God is asking the people of Judah and Jerusalem to plow up the hard ground of their hearts, and they are continuing to ignore him. And he's like, would you just surrender, surrender your pride? In your power, change your hearts before God. But then in Jeremiah 4, we get this big or, or his anger will burn like an unquenchable fire because mm. of Israel's sins. Oh, Israel, he wants a pure heart, not your fake repentance. He has made that known to you. It's not like he's, he hasn't stated his expectations of his relationship with you. He has stated that over and over again, and he has been pleading with Mm -hmm. you. He pleads with Israel to change their hearts or other Bible translations say to circumcise their hearts. And according to EnduringWord.com, Jeremiah uses the image of a baby boy's circumcision in obedience to the covenant of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And instead of taking away the literal foreskin, Judah had to remove the foreskins of their hearts, cutting away the flesh in covenant dedication to the Lord. Again, God's problem with their sins goes beyond their actions. It's with their hearts. Mm -hmm. And he is like, cleanse your heart before me. And what God says will happen because of these sins is horrific. And Jeremiah, he questions 
God. I mean, poor Jeremiah, the words that he has for the people are so heavy that his heart hurts and he writhes in pain. Destruction is before the people. And this destruction, it seems to Jeremiah, is that the earth has been uncreated. Like he is painting this picture of desolation. Like it went back, everything went in reverse. And it was almost like he was turning around the images from Genesis 1 and going backwards. Jeremiah gives a poetic and powerful picture of the utter devastation that would come upon Judah in the coming judgment. And in this earth, the earth will mourn and the heavens will be draped in black because as God says, because of my decree against my people, I've made up my mind and will not change it. Because we know God, I mean, that's it. He will not change it. And so just like the other prophets before him, Jeremiah has to be bold as he asks Israel why they have dressed in beautiful clothes and put on gold jewelry, brightening their eyes with mascara when the ugliness of the end is coming and looking nice won't Mm. help. So it goes back also to the phoniness and the hypocriticalness that we've been talking about in, you know, this past week of of God going, you guys are just a bunch of phonies. You try to worship me, but your, your heart's not in it. You fast, but it's only for show. That's God's like, okay, all this stuff that you're trying to dress up and make look good. No, that's not going to help anymore. Mm -hmm. And so why has this destruction fallen on God's people? It's because, again, we've heard this before, but God has to say it again because sometimes we just don't listen. And he is Mm -hmm. saying, you've refused to repent. And specifically, he's talking to Jerusalem, right? Um, In this particular passage, he's talking to Jerusalem. Their wickedness has deprived them from so much. And God is asking how he could possibly pardon them. And this is from a God who pardons so much. This is from a God who has put up with so much. And he's like, "Ah, how can I possibly pardon you? In fact, he promises to bring distant nations against them. And he says, their weapons are deadly. Their warriors are mighty. They will devour the food of your harvest. They will devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds. You get, I mean, Mm -hmm. it's going to be bad is what he's saying. And, um, but, but even even in his, he, in this, he promises not to blot them out completely. Mm-hmm. I mean, we serve such an amazing God. We, we do not know what this remnant looked like or how, how this remnant, these people were acting, but we do know that there is a remnant that God promises to bring through. And so the majority was not acting in a way to please God. I mean, they were sinning and sinning and sinning, but for a few God said that he would restore his people and their land. They'd have to go through that suffering. They'd have to go through those hardships, but he would still be their God. Mm -hmm. And again, for those other ones, he's not going to pardon them. He's like, Mm -mm, Mm -hmm. I'm done. But for a few, he's like, I'm still your God. I still got your back and I will save you from your sins. Yeah. And it's just amazing that he's so faithful when, because you, like, no, we've been hearing all these prophets. We've been reading these prophets. These messages aren't new. They've been hearing it, ignoring it, obviously, because they're not changing. And yet he's still like, but I'm, I'm like, some of you are going to make it out. There's going to be a remnant and I'm going to be here. And I mean, that is such faithfulness of God. That's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. Well, we need to take a break and um, hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we will have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, the word of the day is providence. Okay, so there's two definitions and one is sometimes capitalized and one is always capitalized. So providence, when it's often capitalized, means divine grace or care. So God is showing Mm. his providence and his divine grace and care, even when they're like going completely off the rails and uh, like the donkey that's in heat. I mean, they're just going off and pursuing Mm -hmm. other things. And he still wants to have divine providence or care. And then the one that's always capitalized is 
God conceived as the power sustaining and guiding human destiny. So God still has providence over Mm -hmm. the world. He has control. Um, He gives us our own will, but he does have control. And as I read Jeremiah, I was reminded of how foolish it is not to seek God or worse to blame him when things go wrong. Um, Jeremiah 2, 29 says, why do you accuse me of doing wrong? You are the ones who have rebelled, says the Lord. So they're like, God, why didn't you help us or whatever? It's like, you're the one. You're the one who did it to yourself. Um, The word providence refers to God's divine guidance, his care and authority over all the elements of existence. It also reminds us that God's ways are mysterious and Mm. sometimes things won't make sense. We might wonder like, God, why am I going through this? This doesn't make sense. Um, And, you know, that that God is still caring. He's still in divine guidance. He has authority. And this verse, I think it really encourages us, you know, when we see about God saying, you're the one who rebelled. Why do you accuse us? It just reminds us that God still is going to have compassion. All Mm -hmm. through Jeremiah, those verses you're bringing up, he still has compassion. And during the trials, he is trying to still be the kind and merciful father, even when the people didn't understand. And even when we, don't understand. And providence reminds us that God is actively involved in our lives. Um, And we must accept God's mystery in our faith. When we can't see him, we can still trust that he's a kind and merciful Mm -hmm. father. And Jeremiah had to trust that. Remember Jeremiah yesterday was saying, I'm so young and how can I share this message? Jeremiah had to trust that, that God cared and God had a message and that Jeremiah would be able to give that message. Um, Also, God's love doesn't enslave us. He lets people choose to do good or bad. So people's Mm -hmm. choices can cause suffering. They do cause suffering. Yet God still wants to comfort us and strengthen us during our trials. So when times are tough, it just reminds us like we can turn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially Jesus has suffered too. He understood humanity. He was sacrificed. I mean, he had everyone rise up against him, but he has that eternal hope and you know, he can make the worst situations beautiful. He can heal things. He can redeem things. Um, and so instead of the people's like, God, why did you let this happen? He's like, I'll tell you why I let it happen. Um, we can still take our worries and concerns, not with that, not with accusations against God, but we can go to him and say like, I don't know why this is happening. Hard stuff is happening. Um, but we trust you. I trust in you. I trust in your goodness. And you know, you know, Jeremiah and these other prophets, when they're seeking God, God is showing, I'm I'm your loving father. I care for you. I comfort you. Um, even if the whole rest of society is going a different direction, the prophets and that remnant are still seeking God because we do see people stepping up and serving God and God is there to faithfully care for them. And it just helps us know that life is hard, first of all. Second of all, people make their own choices and often they leave bring destruction on themselves from their choices, but God is there no matter what's going on. He wants to be there. He wants to care and he has control. He does have providence over us. You know, I think providence is such an all encompassing word to who God is and um, many of his characteristics of being in control of being caring and loving. And it, it just, it encompasses so much And I've got to say that while I was reading, while I saw God's providence, I also saw these warnings, these Mm -hmm. dire warnings, because he was just like, I, you haven't been listening to me. I need you to listen to me. I need you to obey me, to be my people. I have, I have in my providential care, in my providence, I have provided for you for so long, for so many years, for so many generations, for ancestors, for all your ancestors, and yet you still do not pay attention Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And just kept seeing that warning and that warning and going in, in that one point where he was like, where God was like, I'm done. And to be at the end of that, to be at the end of that providential care of God has got to be such a scary place. And you would Mm -hmm. think that with that, with that, that I'm done, there would be so many people who would be like, Oh God, what have we done? And yet their hearts were still so hard and, and just so callous. And we see that those were the ones who completely destroyed yet in God's providential care, there was 
still this small remnant, the people who were like God. We are your people. We are in on our face in front of you right now. We we will obey you from here on out. We are p- your people. Save us. And in God's providence, he, of course, was like, yes, I promise this from the beginning of time. I will. I will save you. Yeah. And it's just so amazing that even in this, your enemies are going to surround you and destruction's coming, all that's happening so that the people will get to the place where they realize they need God. Mm-hmm. You know, we were just talking about Manasseh who sacrificed his own sons and had altars and idols and all this stuff. And when he was taken away, he's like, oh, wait, God, I'm sorry. And God rescued him. <laughs> like yeah. the whole thing has yeah. been so all the hard stuff is that they would realize they need God and turn to him. So even his providence, um, even though he said, I'm going to destroy you and you're going to face this destruction, that providence is still to bring his people back to him. He -hmm. still wants his people back to him. It's divine care by letting hard stuff happen, Mm -hmm. Um, which is just another amazing thing about God that he can like I remember just even when I read that part with Manasseh it's like and Manasseh cried out to God and God rescued him I'm like oh, dude like look at all the stuff you did <laughs> and God yeah. just like the like, yes yes yeah. God wants everybody to turn back to him yeah can you can you pray for us today mm-hmm. as we go about our day or just to see God's providence in our lives mm-hmm Oh, Heavenly Father, I just pray that we will help, you will help us see your divine providence. I think that's a word that's tossed around and often it's tossed around without you. It's like, oh, providence. And we don't realize like this is meaning your divine care. And we thank you for your divine care, Lord, that that the weather systems are working and plants are growing and that our earth is rotating. I mean, all this is because of your divine care and your provision for us. And we just take mm-hmm. so much of it for granted. Um, Lord, forgive us for the pride we have in our hearts, the, the way we seek after other things that do not glorify you. Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds will turn to you, Lord. And I pray um, that if we are even facing hard times, Lord, we will just know that you are there and you care for us and that you love us and you're there when we turn to you, Lord. I pray that we will understand your providence and understand your care so we don't um, don't feel like we have to solve all the problems that we can turn mm-hmm. to you and you will be there to help us. So help us today, guide us today, lead us today. And thank you that you're always there in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Jeremiah 5 verses 20 through 31, Jeremiah 6, 2 Kings 22 verses 3 through 20, 2 Chronicles 34 verses 8 through 28. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.